The TicWatch E3 is a new budget Wear OS smartwatch from the company Mobvoi, a company that has pioneered the Wear OS platform by being the first smartwatch manufacturer to feature the ultra-fast Qualcomm Snapdragon Wear 4100 CPU chip in their TicWatch Pro 3. If you've seen in my previous videos on Wear OS, you'll know that the Qualcomm 4100 is the real star of the show here, as it fixes a significant issue with lag or just overall sluggishness on the UI. Surprisingly, the TicWatch E3 is no slouch as it is equipped with the very same powerful processor as its bigger brother, the TicWatch Pro 3. In this video, we'll go over the differences and similarities between the TicWatch E3 and the Pro 3 and answer the question, which Wear OS watch is best suited for you? Let's get right into the video. So I've been using the TicWatch E3 for quite some time now, and I'm very happy to report that it feels as snappy and responsive as my TicWatch Pro 3. Doing things like interacting with the powerful Google Assistant, opening apps, swiping through notifications feels like a premium experience, and that's no surprise thanks to the blazing fast Snapdragon 4100 chip, and most importantly, the abundance of memory. That's right, you heard it. This watch has the same one gig of RAM as the TicWatch Pro 3, and this really makes the Wear OS experience feel a lot smoother because you can load applications into memory and have them readily available whenever you need them. So let's talk about the design aspect of this watch. One of my favorite aspects of the TicWatch E3 is its new sleek and minimalist design. One notable characteristic of this new design is that it has a smooth edge on the glass. Even though it's slightly thicker than the TicWatch Pro 3, it still has a very small footprint on your wrist while still looking very nice on larger wrists. It's ultra lightweight at 32 grams, which makes it very suitable for 24 seven wear, which is very important if you wanna accurately track all your health metrics like your sleep or your heart rate. The 20 millimeter interchangeable wrist strap is made of a very high silicone grade, so it performs very well during intense workouts. Basically, you won't be bothered working out with this watch in the hot sun, sweating a lot. Overall, I have to say, this is a very attractive smartwatch. I just love the gunmetal look, and also the design is very simple. So let's talk about sleep tracking and also the SpO2 sensor that's embedded on this watch. Now, one thing that Mavoi has done a really good job at is filling in all the gaps with Wear OS. As you know, Wear OS doesn't have native sleep tracking, so they've built a really cool third-party custom app that really helps promote healthy sleeping. And I'm gonna explain about that later in this section. Now, like the TicWatch Pro 3, I have to say, this is a very accurate sleep tracker. I'm just always very impressed with how well it can detect my start and end time when I'm sleeping. I find it more accurate than a lot of more dedicated fitness trackers like the Garmin or Fitbit. So Mavoi did a really good job at adding native sleep tracking so you don't have to open up any app when you go to sleep. And they have really tailored their algorithms to work very well with this watch. So how exactly does Mavoi promote better sleep? Well, it all starts with their well-designed sleep app. First off, you can access your sleep metrics directly on your wrist, which is the first step to improving accessibility into your nightly sleep metrics. You see, some of the other fitness trackers would force you to open their smartphone app just to see the metrics, and this added friction to access your sleep metrics compounded daily, as it was, at least for me, a very annoying routine to have to grab my smartphone, open the app, just to see my sleep score. What's even better is that you can enable a daily notification to appear after you wake up to easily access your sleep results with literally just one tap. Now I know this may sound really all insignificant, but this is just one example of Mobvoi's attention to detail that really improves the overall user experience and helps promote better sleep. One of the hardest issues I face with my sleep is that it's very hard for me to go to sleep and wake up consistently. The TicWatch sleep app does a really good job at promoting a consistent sleep schedule by allowing you to set tracking hours, i.e. this is the period where you should be sleeping, and non-tracking hours, the period where you shouldn't be sleeping. Not only does this help optimize battery life, it establishes a common start and end time for your sleep so that it can show you a notification reminder of when you should go to sleep, and you can also enable an alarm based on that schedule. And what's really cool is that this alarm can have a smart alarm feature. So what is a smart alarm feature? Well, basically it helps you wake up at the right time when you're you know, in a light phase by using sleep telemetry collected from the hardware sensors of your watch. So this personally has helped me a lot waking up feeling less groggy and less sleepy in the morning because this alarm tries to avoid waking me up when I'm in a deep sleep or REM sleep phase. Now, I love that the sleep app shows all the detailed metrics you'd expect from my modern fitness tracker, like sleep efficiency, which is kind of like the sleep score. The TicWatch E3 tracks and displays all various sleep stages like REM, light, and deep sleep. It also tracks your heart rate throughout the entire night, 
and most interestingly, your SpO2 or your blood oxygen percentage, which is a very important metric for those with sleep apnea, a condition that I have. I randomly stop breathing at night and can suffer from low blood oxygen saturation, which can lead to more serious complications. So having an SpO2 monitor is essential for me to ensure that my CPAP therapy is working as intended. However, if you wake up feeling groggy in the morning, or sometimes you gasp for air at night, or your partner says that you snore a lot, those possibly could be symptoms for a sleep apnea condition, and you should consult with a medical professional, but I would not rely on a consumer device to diagnose such a serious condition. Now for other people, the SpO2 reading is also a very interesting metric for those who want to spot check their blood oxygen. Let's say you're climbing a very tall mountain and you're at very high altitudes. This is a good device to ensure that your blood is absorbing sufficient oxygen. Another area where the SpO2 metric might be helpful is to track conditions where you may have respiratory illnesses, such as the one that we're all talking about right now. Now, of course, this is not a medical device and definitely consult with a medical professional if you feel any symptoms. So all in all, I have to say that the SpO2 readings are quite reasonable and they're much better and at least more reasonable than Garmin, but I wish that it would track more than one hour intervals. I know that the SpO2 sensor uses a lot of battery since it uses a very intense LED light, but I hope that Mobwai will release a new firmware update to give users the option to enable a more fine grain SpO2 tracking at the expense, of course, at a shorter battery life. Speaking of battery life, let's talk about that. Now, one of the most notable differences between the TicWatch E3 and the Pro 3 is the amount of battery capacity it has. The Pro has a 585 milliamp battery, whereas the E3 has a smaller 380 milliamp. Now, that's not to say that the E3 doesn't have a very good battery life. I was very impressed with the performance, and I think a lot of it has to do with the overall battery optimizations provided by Wear OS and, of course, Mobvoi. With the always-on display enabled, which is probably the most intensive battery drain, it lasted about 24 hours, so I was able to use one day of use and have one night of tracking with SpO2. Now, if you disable the always-on display, you get a significant boost in battery life. I was able to get three days of battery life or about two nights of SpO2 tracking. Now, this uses the tilt-to-wake gesture in order to view the time of your screen, so you won't have an always-on display, but I was still very impressed with the overall battery performance of this smaller watch. Just think about it, a couple years ago with Wear OS, we couldn't even have one day of battery life, let alone even sleep tracking, so we've come a long way. Now, even though this is a Wear OS watch and not necessarily a fully dedicated fitness tracker, I have to say, TickWatch has done a great job at, like I said before, filling the gaps that doesn't come with Wear OS. And this is really geared towards their activity tracking. So not only is the sleep tracking amazing, it also has 24 seven continuous tracking in terms of the heart rate. And that hasn't really affected the battery life. So I was very impressed with how it was able to maintain that type of continuous tracking and still provide a very good battery life overall. Now there are quite a few custom TickWatch apps, but most notably there's one that provides a proactive workout detection. And what this means is that you don't have to click on anything. If you start walking or start running, it can detect that you're doing some kind of workout and then just kind of turn on without any, any clicking. So not only is the software doing a good job at tracking, so is the hardware sensors. And I'm talking about the accelerometer and most importantly, the GPS sensor. That has done a great job at tracking my runs and I'm very pleased with the results. And for those who like to exercise in a pool and swim a lot, you'll be happy to know that this is waterproof so you can take it to the pool and not be worried about any damage. Now this wouldn't be a fully fledged smartwatch without the Google Voice Assistant and of course Google Pay. Now, these are two notable features that is very hard to come by on a fitness tracker these days. And one thing I really like about this voice assistant is that it uses the powerful Google Assistant, which is so essential if you're invested in Google's ecosystem. Having a mic and having a speaker just really improves the usability of this watch because you don't have to fuddle with all the menus and screens just to set an alarm, for example, or even set a reminder while you're walking. This makes interacting with a watch day to day a very pleasant and more convenient experience. What's the weather like? Currently in Aurelia, it's 21 degrees and sunny. Today, it'll be clear, with a forecasted high of 21 and a low of 7. What I really like about the mic and speaker is that I can have a full-on conversation and they just sound as good as the TicWatch Pro 3. It's very convenient to have this feature if you're on the go and you, just want to, you don't want to pull out your smartphone. You just want to quickly take a call and say, hey, I'm going to be going in the elevator and just quickly take the call on your wrist. Now the TicWatch 3 has not skimped on a lot of hardware sensors and most notably you're going to have your NFC chip and this is a very very good feature to have especially if you're in North America because Google Pay is widely supported by all banks in the US and Canada and it's starting to show up on transit so eventually you'll be able to pay for your public transportation with this watch. 
One really app that I highly recommend is using Stocard, and thanks to the high resolution display of this watch, you can store all your loyalty discount cards and gym memberships, you know, anything with a serial code or barcode onto your wrist so that you don't have to carry a bulky wallet with you all everywhere you go. So this has been very useful if you wanna say collect points at your local drug mart. So all in all, let's talk about this summary of differences between the TicWatch E3. Now the TicWatch E3 is a more budget conscious friendly, so the lower price, there's gonna be some sacrifices that you're gonna be making. Most notably, it's gonna be in the display. It's gonna have a slightly smaller display at 1.3 inches versus the 1.4 inch. It's not gonna be AMOLED and it doesn't have ambient brightness sensor. So this can be a little bit challenging if you you know go between bright and dark spots a lot, but I had personally no issues seeing this display in the bright sunlight. The one thing I really do miss from the TicWatch Pro 3 is the lack of always on display. Now, yes, you can enable an always on display on this TicWatch E3. And what's really cool about that is you can actually display all the widgets or complications in the always on display configuration. That means you can always have access to your weather without having to even tilt your wrist at all, for example. The only sacrifice with this is that it's really gonna hurt your battery life and you're gonna basically get 24 hours or one night of tracking. That's not bad at all. It's a lot better than what we had previously, but I really miss the dual display technology that is on the TicWatch Pro 3, which basically gives you the best of both worlds, an AMOLED display and a trans-reflective low power consumption display. Ultimately, these trade-offs really depend on what you value the most. With the TicWatch E3, you're still getting the same one gig of memory and the ultra-fast Qualcomm 4100 chip as the TicWatch Pro 3, although at a cheaper and lighter design. This shared hardware design really translates to a smooth and seamless Wear OS experience, especially thanks to the essential mic input and speaker output. I really look forward to the future of Wear OS with all the new updates that are coming up, and I'm sure that this hardware will last many generations to come. If you're still facing a tough decision between choosing this Wear OS watch or let's say a Garmin or Fitbit fitness tracker, then I highly recommend to check out my previous video where I covered this topic in great detail, giving 10 reasons why Wear OS is better than Fitbit or Garmin. I will add a link to that video in the description. Anyways, that's it for this video. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any questions about this watch or need help deciding. Also, please do give this video a like, it really helps out the channel a lot, and don't forget to click the subscribe button to see my future wearable content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.